Alright, T-Rex82 here. Welcome back to another Empyrean Galactic Creators Studio update. Uh, I have completed the A23 Thanatos just recently, so that's what you're looking at right here. Uh, let me go ahead and bring the lights up a little bit so we can all take a nice little look at it. Now again, this is going to be 10.6 only. I did port this over into uh, the previous build, 10.5, and it handles like a brick. So surprisingly... Oh my god, I just realized I need to shave. Jesus. You guys need to tell me things like this. Um, 10.5, it handles like a brick. And that's partly because the thrusters. Uh, there weren't enough thrusters for 10.5 for it to really be viable. Uh, it didn't turn well. It didn't pitch well. It didn't do anything well until it was in 10.6. Now, the thing I find interesting about this is... While a lot of people don't like the aspect of the new flight model, I kind of really do, because in the other builds that I have, I'll be honest, I never really used roll at all. Uh, I kind of just used yaw to get where I needed to go. I would yaw left, yaw right, and go straight, and that was it. This vessel that I have created is interesting. Because it may be slow to roll. Uh, you can speed it up a little bit by using the turbo or the, the shift key. Uh, that'll get it to roll just a little bit better. But once you get this pitched left or right, and you point that nose up, this thing will turn on a dime. And actually, once you get used to it, it's incredibly, incredibly fun to, to fly. And actually, I've, I've been flying this thing through mountain ranges just to see how close I can get. And once you get the hang of it, it's a blast. So let's take a look at it and, and see what I've done. Now, initially, I said that I was not going to be putting any warp drive in this. Um, and that's still something that I have thought about. Um, I did put one in. I actually extended this back one block, and I was able to fit a warp drive. Thoughts on that. Um, with the warp drive in there, I cannot turn this over to combat armor and still retain that tier 2 status. That actually puts it over by about 900 CPU. Um, so the options here are this. It's personal preference. You could either keep the warp drive in and go with a light fighter, still fully capable, cheap to repair, or you could go ahead and take out the warp drive and fill in that gap with additional thrusters, maybe two additional thrusters to give it a little bit more lift. And the rest could be cargo extensions. You throw in those cargo extensions, I'm pretty sure you can close you can get close to probably I want to say 14 or 15,000 um, PSU in this capacity. Uh, right now, I believe it's sitting right around six, if I'm not mistaken. Let's take a look. We're sitting at 6,625. Not bad. For a level 10 vessel, this is pretty dang good. So what I've done is I gave it this little bit of a camo look. Um, I really wish we had digital camo. Hint, hint, Ilion. Uh, I think that would be great. Uh, my other goal with this build is to make this so efficient that possibly this might get considered as a prefab. And let me know what you guys think. See if you would like to see this as a prefab in the new, uh, the new stable version that comes out. I think personally, my own opinion, I think it's pretty dang good. Um, and I try not to say that a lot about my designs, but this one, I, I really like the way this turned out. So we did a little bit of a three tone on this. Actually, I mean, yeah, three, three or four tone, believe it or not. So we've got that camo uh, in there with a nice dark grays not quite black almost like a charcoal um we kept it so that there is three gatling guns you have two uh missile pods on the side and these missile pods i did want to give them just a little bit extra protection so i did build around it with those flat blocks to try to just give it a little bit more protection um you're still going to get them shot off that's just the way it is but this might help them last just a little bit longer 
The other thing I did is change the design slightly. So I extended it out by one block. I was able to fit in the spotlights underneath. Uh, I think it gives it just a little bit more fun factor to it. But by doing that, I was also able to widen the thruster. So this allows me to widen it slightly, give it a little bit better roll. Um, I can't remember who suggested that down in the comments, but thank you very much. It, it worked very well. Um, it does currently have one RCS to help it along just a little bit. And I'll be honest, I don't feel much of a difference. There is a slight difference, but not that much by using one RCS versus none. Um, so other option is you could take out the RCS as well, and that's going to free up, oh God, another, I think, 700 CPU that you could use on this thing. So options are there. Uh, this is incredibly upgradable if you want to just remove a few things. Uh, you can you can do whatever you want. You could add on more weapons. You could, you know, increase cargo capacity. It's kind of fun. So what I've done is in the back here, we've got basic necessities. So up top, you're going to have your oxygen uh, system. This is going to be your, just your basic fuel tank. There's three currently on the vessel, and that's all I need to get. About, oh, it's about a little bit over an hour and a half worth of flight time. Full throttle. Other than that, you're going to be up over 200 minutes at that point. Down in the bottom, this is the Pentaxid tank. Um, again, if you take out the warp drive, you can throw in... God, you could throw in a refrigerator in here. You could possibly throw in a constructor. I, don't, I didn't build this vehicle thinking that a constructor would be something that you'd need. Again, this is a fighter. Uh, this is your just quick in and out, hit the target... And then you can go ahead and land once it's safe and then go on foot and, and do the rest. As you can see right there is the one RCS. All right, so we've got on this side, you're going to have, it was like I said, it was 6,600 on the cargo capacity. On the opposite side is your ammo capacity. And that you didn't need as much. So we're only sitting at about 1,500. It should be fully sufficient for that. Up front, I did a little bit more designing as far as, you know, giving a little bit more of my style, which is kind of blending a bit of that smooth transition, the rounded transitions into those, those harsh angles. I have always had a problem building harsh, just a straight up harsh angle or smooth angle build like a lot of other builders are able to do. Like Jay Randall is perfect for that. His builds that he does are very angular but they almost look like they're chunked, like in pieces, like pieces that you could take off of the vessel. I have a hard time achieving things like that. I find by using these curve blocks, I can kind of steer your eye away from the things that I'm personally not happy with um, or transitions that I'm having a hard time getting to grips with. So that's why I use a lot of curve blocks. It gives it a little bit more of a detail factor but also pulls your eye towards those those certain areas. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to take it for a quick little flight. Um, I wish we had wheels because I did build this pretty cool little runway just to uh, to uh, show. But it is possible to use as well. If I were to take the landing gear off and put skids on it, it's perfectly viable. You could land this on a runway. Um, other options, you could even take off the front thrusters to slow you down and purely allow friction to slow you down as well. That would also free up CPU. Um, there's a lot of options with this new flight model, and I, I kind of like it. I, I, I like where it's going. I really do. A lot of people don't like it. I think we're stuck in our ways, but with a little bit of practice, as Excalibur said in his last stream, I'm pretty sure this is going to go the route of volume and mass, where once you use it, and get the hang of it, you're not going to be able to get enough of it. You won't go back to that old way of doing it. Other thing I did was add in a little bit of this design aesthetic here. So I took out the solid um, armor that was curved in that fashion and actually put in a frame because by putting in that frame, I was able to put in just a little bit more detail and a little bit more of the lighting. I, I, I'm a stickler for lighting. I love it. It's something that I like to add in whenever I can. So let's go ahead and take this for a spin. And you can see exactly what I'm talking about when I start pitching this around. Um, 
versus the yaw effect. So I'll start out just doing a couple yaw turns so you can kind of see the rate, and then we'll go ahead, roll it over, and pitch it up, and you'll see exactly what happens. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's turn on the actual HUD so I can see where I'm going. All right. All right, and as you can see, acceleration, pretty dang good. We're already up to 70 right now, or almost, 63.2. Now let's do a couple of yaw. And I always use the flight mode. So this is just the yaw. Nothing else to it. It's not bad. Pilot mode is something that I'm starting to really like. Um, I can't see any other way of flying at this point. Alright, so now let me roll it over and pitch the nose up. And it just gives it a slightly better turning radius. And that's a, that's a new way of me for flying. So it allows me to do more of a feeling of, of an actual jet, if you want to call it that. So let's go ahead. Let's take it over to these mountains. Why not? See what we can do. Hit the burner just to get it up to speed a little bit better. There we go. Now, because of the weight on this, it does not hit that 70 max. I did before I added in the jump drive. That 70 meters per second, but you know, it is what it is. It's only a few meters per second, it's not too bad. You can still quickly fly into a POI, strafe it, fly out, come back around, and do it again. Visibility, not too bad. This is my favorite cockpit, always has been. I can't go wrong with it. I've tried other ones, and it's just too much in my field of view, and it really bothers me. It kind of triggers me when that happens. Well, let's see, let's go ahead and pitch this over, and we'll dip it right down in. It's just fun. I, I don't know how else, to, how else to describe it. Getting as close as I can to the ground, and then just kind of using this pilot mode is something that I really, really enjoy. We'll pop up over the mountain, use the burner to get back up to speed. Roll it, because why not? Come down the mountain. Woo, that was a close one, hey? Eh? <laughs> not bad. Not bad. So let's head back over this way. And it causes me to do that head tilt whenever I'm flying this thing, too. So <laughs> that's always fun to watch as well, I suppose. All right. So let's go ahead and park it. Oop, I did clip it. That was my fault. That was an error. Should have my should have my landing strip somewhere over here. I believe this is where I came from. But yeah, rolling without using the shift key is about like that. It's pretty slow. Once I use the shift key, you can see really it starts to pitch in. Um, and it works even when you're completely out of completely out of your your um, jet thrust that you can use that you're allocated that that recharges all right and one last test let's see if I can actually land this thing using just friction to stop so what I'm going to do is we'll engage that go and we'll see if we can line up with that runway takes me back to my flight sim days I used to love doing that Alright, where to go? It was just here. <laughs> Come on. Am I out of range? Did I just miss it? Should be right. Alright, here we go. Ah, there it is.
right between the trees like a glove oh you see I didn't even do that right oh well it would have been cool but anyway there it is let's park it and jump back out all right fully textured currently on the workshop now I put it up late last night uh, it's gotten some pretty decent reviews so far um, please stop on by the link will be down in the description give it a like if you like it if you like what you see and you want to follow more on the builds obviously hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content and until next time keep your heads above the hard deck and i'll catch you later take care